Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at inserting values into our database. So I've got the um, table creation, database creation handled here using the SQLite Open Helper and I'm going to give this class that I've created, which extends SQLite Open Helper, a, uh, another method, public void, um, let's call it set points or maybe store points and that's going to take a list of Java point, um, Android point objects, let's call it points, um, which is going to store in the database. So um, the first thing we need to do is we need to get a kind of handle to the database and that will allow us to write to the database. So I'm going to type get writable database and that returns a SQLite database object. So SQLite um, SQLite database, there we go. And I'll just call that, uh, let's call it DB. And um, one thing that you must never forget, so I'm going to put it in here so that I don't forget it, is to close the database. So I'm going to say db.close. And in between we want to write some values to this table, the points table that I've created here. So um, I'm going to first clear out the database. I'm going to delete all the values in that table by saying db.delete. Uh, and now, um, well, I'm not going to use this work clause because I want to delete all of them. So I'll pass null for that. And the arguments for the work clause I don't want to use. So I'll pass null for that as well. And um, I want to, I need to put the table name in here. The table name is this, points. But rather than refer to the same text twice within this class, uh, I'm going to use a private static final string. And I'll call it, uh, let's call it points table equals points. And uh, we, we wouldn't use uh, like a resource string for this because the resource strings are just for things that the user sees visually and they're not going to see the name of the table unless something's gone badly wrong. So uh, let's, uh, let's in fact create the SQL by doing a string dot format or I could just use plus signs and I'll just have a percent %s in there and um, here I'll pass in, um, let's just maximize this editor, I'll pass in the name of the table which is points table like this. So uh, I'm just using string.format to replace this percent %s with this single argument here which is the name of the table and I'll do a similar thing down here, actually I won't because I, I just need the name of the table down here so I'll just type in points table here and now I've got that, I'm going to loop through the points that have been passed in. So I'll say for point, point, in points. This is kind of what we call a for each loop in Java. And uh, for each point, I'm going to use the, um, I'm going to use a content values object, uh, which I'll call values. And I'll set that equal to a new content values like this. Now our content values um, is, and this is part of a mechanism that um, allows us to write the database in such a way that we're kind of using wildcards, um, which is always a good idea anyway. And um, uh, I'm going to, you need to say um, for each like column that I want to put a value to, I need to say values.put and I need to supply a, supply a key. Uh, which would be the, the column name and a value that I want to um, place in that column. Now my column names at the, at the moment are hard coded in a table. I've got three of them. I've got ID, X and Y. So I'm going to take those out and turn them into private static final strings. So let's say private static final string um, key ID or I could say ID column or something like that or call ID, something like that um, equals ID and let's just copy that and paste in a couple more because I want to have column X and 
and so column Y, because those are the names of my columns. And let's replace ID in here with percent %s, and replace X with percent %s, and Y with percent %s. This is my create statement for my table. And I want to use these values here now, rather than um, having the same string written out twice, which will be pretty bad practice and will cause problems if we change them in one place only. I'll just do Control shift f to format that a bit, and that looks pretty okay. So I've got ID, X and Y, so that seems fine to me. And the table name is the first argument here, so that's all good. And now I can say, okay, values.put, and for the ID, call ID. I'm gonna have to have an integer there. And so that I have an integer, let's just say here, int, um, i equals naught, and let's just increment that every time we go through the loop like this, i plus plus. So I'll save I'll save this um, for the id, and then if I copy this, save a little bit of time, and I've got the the x column now, and I've got the y column to store my y coordinate. And I'm just going to use here um, the values from my point, so point.x and point.y. And finally, the final step here is I need to do um, db.insert, and I pass in the table name here, which is points table. And this null column hat thing here is um, something that allows you to insert um, values that are just empty, cont um, content values with no keys, but I won't use that, I'll set it to null. And the values here, that's my content values object. I'll put a semicolon at the end there. Um, so every time we go around this loop, it's going to use these content values to insert values into this table using these, which are the, the column names in the table, and those are the values that we want to set those columns to. And when we finished inserting there, we'll just close the database handle. Um, so, um, and that, that should all work, and um, we're not going to see anything for the moment, because uh, as of yet, I am not querying the table, but in the next tutorial, we'll get on to querying the table, uh, and then we'll be able to check whether our points really are correctly being stored or not. And for the moment, one thing I'm, one thing I am going to do is um, in my um, in my image activity here. This is the point um, which we fixed up in a previous tutorial where I want to store the points. So I'm just going to call there my using my database class that I've been creating here db.storePoints using that method that I just defined and I'm going to use that to store these points and uh, it's probably an idea to check that there's no um, errors and um, it's I, I find it's hard to write error, um, code like this and that's absolutely flawless the first time but we'll see what errors come up and if there are any I'll go in fix them and get back to you but hopefully everything's correct and we won't see any obvious errors which at least at least gives us some reassurance that the thing's working so let's take a look and when the image comes up here I just need to click one two three four points and now if we look at DDMS here in fact we've got a lot of red text that's come up and the exception here is we've got a duplicate column name ID um, so I've got create yeah and um, in my SQL here it seems that I've actually got I've called all the columns ID for some strange reason let's just take a look at what's going on there and um, go to point collector and look at the um, not point collector actually the um, database class so I'll go to database.java and uh, I forgot here to change the name of the um, columns. 
so I, I told you I always do something stupid but I thought I'd I thought I'd rather show you that um, just um, because I'm I'm guessing unless you're uh, a genius you'll probably have similar problems and I just wanted to show you what to do about them so let's go to DDMS again and uh, let's check that the application is actually running and being installed so it says it's uploading it and we should see success in a minute and here we go so we'll go to CDMS we'll clear, we'll clear this and go to the emulate, emulator here and one, two, three, four and this time we've got no errors and we can see we're running the method that collects the points because I've got that collected points um, output which is coming from down here okay so that's it for this tutorial and in the next tutorial I'm going to go on to querying that database so join me again then and until next time happy coding